Hi everyone, Julia Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. Welcome back. Today I've got another Julia Airbrush System video for you. My system, as you recall, released in May 218 or thereabouts. This video is intended for anybody who has the system already or who might be getting it in the future. However, I will say this video is only going to be of use under a limited set of circumstances. And those are if you are operating under super high humidity and heat conditions, or if you're operating your compressor at high output for long periods of time. In both of those cases, water can sometimes accumulate in the compressor line. As you can see here, I was operating this one today. It's over 100 degrees, 100% 100 humidity here in St. Louis, and was also operating it pretty hard. And you can see there's a moisture droplet here, some condensation here, etc. Normally, you might not even notice that because many of you might be operating with airbrushes that don't have clear hoses like on the Julia system and oftentimes the water can just sit there and go nowhere. However, when both of those two conditions, the heat, humidity, and the amount you're using your compressor, if both of those conditions are high, then sometimes that water can actually travel up through the hose, out my precision air control valve, and out through the airbrush. In fact, this could happen with any airbrush. It's not unique to my system. So it's important to know how to clear moisture from the line when that occurs because you, of course, don't want moisture on your end product. Fortunately, that's super easy to do, and I'm going to show you three different ways to do it, some cost-free, some involving a little additional cost, and you can make your decision about how you want to go with it. Okay, what do you need for this video? Basically, you need the Julia system, which, as a reminder, consists of my on-demand compressor, the hose with a quick connect adapter, the quick connect adapter is critical for inserting a moisture trap, which is one of the methods I'm going to show you for keeping water from emerging from the line and onto your product. You'll need the Julia airbrush. And optionally, for that one method I spoke of, you'll need a moisture trap. I'll have the part number floating overhead. And you can, of course, purchase that through confectioncouturestencils.com, my stencil partner, or directly from the manufacturer, which is Badger Airbrush Company. Let's talk about inserting a moisture trap as option one into the line, also known as a moisture filter. There are a couple of benefits of this. First, once it's in, it can stay in and it will 100% prevent moisture from traveling through the line and getting onto your product. None of the other two methods I'm going to show are a safeguard against it, but this is a 100% safeguard. The downside is it costs a little bit of money, but it's not such a downside because it's a relatively inexpensive part. You can find it for 10 to $20, depending on where you find it online. But the part in question looks something like this, and it comes from Badger, outfitted like so, with this threaded end, smaller threaded end, and a larger quick connect end on top. I'm going to show you two methods, two placements of it in the line, and also talk about the pros and cons of placing it in those different places. It works equally well in either place. I tend to have a personal preference, which I'm going to show you first. My personal preference is to insert the moisture trap exactly as it comes with the fittings where they are. And to do that, as a reminder, your airbrush comes with two fittings. You want to use the quick connect fitting. You can only do this with the quick connect fitting. So we want to take away the barbed fitting. So what you want to do is take this quick connect fitting, and rather than putting it on the valve stem as we do in normal operation without the moisture filter in there, you want to screw it into the bottom fitting on the moisture trap, like so. And then you want to thread the fatter end directly onto the valve stem of your airbrush, if you will. So configured, it looks like so. Again, this is the quick connect adapter. So now all you have to do is slip it into the quick connect adapter at the end of the hose, and you're ready to operate. I like this configuration because it gives me a little something extra to hang on to. This is like an extra stabilizer and handle. So that's terrific. I also like it because the moisture trap is configured to put it in here so I don't have to take anything off the moisture trap to orient it somewhere else in the line. The only downside, however, is if I'm working with multiple airbrushes and colors, which I do when I'm working with many, many colors on a cookie, I can't really easily swap in another airbrush unless it also has a moisture trap in it. So I'd have a need for more moisture traps in that case because the quick connect is at the bottom of the moisture trap rather than at the top. So 
In the next setup, I'm going to show you how to get around that. If you're working with multiple colors, you might want to locate the trap lower in the line below the quick disconnect. But let me quickly show you how this works to clear the line. In either configuration, you're going to clear the line and the moisture trap the same way. So suppose this was running, you'll eventually see moisture accumulate in this area of the trap. You can see some moisture running up the end of the gun now as I'm blowing out air. See those little bubbles traveling up? They're going to get collected here. It never gets very full. It might get, oh, I don't know, a quarter of the way full. You might actually feel some water sputtering out the bottom when it begins to get over full. And so what you want to do in that case, and you want to do this not near your cookie product, of course, is you just want to push up on this little silver button, and water will basically spew out here. It'll be released around that button and into the general environment. So you want to do this, again, away from whatever you're working on. And you'll notice my line is now relatively clear. So again, the moisture traps a safeguard against any moisture coming up through here and out of the gun, because it's all going to be caught here. So that was configuration number one with the moisture filter above the quick connect. I'm going to show you another configuration now if you're working with multiple guns requiring fast connects. And I'm going to bring in another moisture trap. Again, this is how it comes configured, but to configure it in the other location, we're going to need to take off this fitting at the bottom, just on screws. We're also going to need to take off the fitting, this little nut at the top. Now I'm going to disconnect this gun and get my airbrush back to what it looked like before to start. Now the other thing I'm going to have to do is I want the quick connect now up at the gun area. So I'm going to have to take the quick connect adapter and put it back on the airbrush in the normal position we have it when we don't have the moisture filter in. Now I want to take my quick connect off the end of the hose and insert the moisture trap in between the quick connect and the hose. Now this piece, without the threaded part on the bottom, can thread directly onto the hose. So now with the moisture trap screwed directly into the line, I'm going to take the quick disconnect piece and screw it into the top. So this way, the, the quick disconnect valve here and the inline flow regulator are going to be right up next to the gun as they usually are. Now with that in place, I just simply need to click my gun in place and I'm ready to go. That's what the configuration looks like. It's a little bit more extended, if you will, than what I showed you before. But it has the advantage of if working with multiple colors, I just unplug that. Then I bring in another gun with a different color and insert it. I don't need a second moisture trap to do this. The only downside for me is it feels a little more awkward to have this so low in the line. There's a little less to hang on to, but that's sort of a minor thing. If it bothers you, you can always invest in another moisture trap. The operation of the moisture trap or moisture filter is exactly the same. Just press on this pin to release any trap moisture. We don't have any in the moisture trap right now because I cleared the line earlier. So that completes two different ways of installing a moisture filter. My preference is the first way when I'm not working with multiple colors. I'm now going to show you two other ways for clearing moisture from the line. They're not 100% fail safe because some moisture can still slip through if you're not actively monitoring the line, but one of them is cost free and quite easy to do. Okay, so here's option two. Supposing you don't want to invest in the 10 to $20 moisture filter, that's understandable. I should say, as an aside, we didn't put a moisture filter directly on the compressor. Some systems do have them directly on the compressor. We didn't want to do that because we didn't want to overinflate the price of the whole system for those of you who may never need to install a moisture filter. So we're, our goal was to keep the cost down for you guys. Some of you may never need it. Some of you may opt to use this method instead because you're usually operating under dry conditions. So that being said, this method is cost free, but it does require that you monitor the line periodically. Now I got a line that has some moisture in it now, you can see. And what you can do with this method is simply blow the 
moisture out. Now, this is the normal configuration of the airbrush with the line. Remember, it just pops in like so. If I were to turn the compressor on and try to blow out that moisture, it, it doesn't really travel up the line unless I take the quick connect adapter off here and stick it into the end here. This way it'll call continuously for air as if the valve is fully open and that will cause the water to be pushed up and out of the line. And we're going to watch that. I'm going to turn the compressor on now and you'll notice the water rapidly traveling up and out of the line, spitting out up here. So again, you want to aim that away from whatever you're working on. And you just want to do that until you get all the visible moisture or most of it out of the line. Just got a little more close to the top and I do want to get that out because that's the stuff that's most likely to spit out onto product if you don't have a moisture filter. And now you'd be ready to operate again. It's easiest to actually screw this onto the airbrush by taking it back out. You just need to screw that back on and plug in and then you'd be ready to airbrush in your normal way. Now the only downside, as I said, of this method is that the compressor will continue to heat up and if your conditions are hot and humid, you'll continue to generate moisture in the line. So you'll need to do that periodically, depending on the ambient conditions. It could be every 30 minutes or so. It could be less frequent than that. It could be more frequent than that. So you're going to constantly need to be, or rather routinely needing to be watching the line to make sure there's no moisture getting close to coming up through here and out the airbrush. Okay, so that completes a cost-free option for clearing the line that requires monitoring. If you want to monitor less frequently, I've got another option for you which involves swapping in a clean dry hose. Now this isn't cost free because you'd still have to invest in a new hose, but the hose can be sometimes less than the moisture filter depending on where you find this online. On Confection Couture this runs about $15 whereas the moisture filter runs about $17. This will still require some monitoring and swapping in and out, so it's not my preferred choice, but again I'm just presenting you with options. Now to swap in the new hose, you simply disconnect this old one once it's blown out at the compressor and disconnect it like so. And then you can set it aside in a dry space, maybe hang it so that any moisture in it kind of drains out. And then just set up your hose as we did in our compressor setup video recently. Just screw on the threaded non-valve end to the compressor. So just click it into place and we're ready to go. As clarification, this hose is completely dry. It's not been used. Whereas the one we blew out is mostly void of water. It still has a little bit in it. So the advantage of this method is it buys you a little more time before you have to blow out this line. With extreme conditions, you might be able to operate 30 minutes to an hour, maybe longer, maybe less before you see moisture in this line and then you'd have to repeat the process of blowing this out and then swapping in the hose we let to hang to dry. Okay, so that's it for this video. I showed you three different methods for making sure that water that accumulates in your line doesn't travel through it and up through the airbrush onto product. My preference, as I mentioned before, is going with the inexpensive moisture filter because I never have to worry about monitoring the line, but you've got plenty of options and the choice is yours. The good news is you may not even need this video because you may never experience a lot of moisture in your line. Again, it really only happens under hot, humid conditions and extended use of the compressor. I never use the moisture trap when operating in winter months. However, when I'm operating here in St. Louis, Missouri, which is very hot and humid during the summer, I almost always have it in my line. You can buy my moisture filter and you'll see the part number scrolling across the screen, either from my stencil partner, confectioncouturestencils.com, or directly from the manufacturer of my system, who is Badger Airbrush Company. Till next video, live sweetly.